Okay, two models to speak about. Let's start with that. So this one is almost done. I've just got the nose doors to put on, nose gear doors. And I, under the circumstances, think that I can be quite happy with the way that's come out. So there's just a couple of things that I want to say about this. Um, while I'm very glad about the decal color, so you can see that pretty aged white, giving it a very 1970s look, even though the plastic is quite bright white. Um, the glue on the decals is quite aged and there is silvering. And if I touched any of those decals while I was gluing on other parts and still if I touch them by accident I don't know if you'll be able to yeah you can see a bit of the silvering on this one here so what that means and I think underneath on the X here are oh, there there's very obvious silvering so that is hardly touching the surface now that would be fairly representative of what happened in the 70s anyway with a kid's build. But the glue on these things has deteriorated significantly. In fact, I'm, I'm looking at this one and even noticing the, I don't know if that'll come across, but it's, it's quite raised from the surface. It isn't touching at all. But this, I'm not going to touch this. I could spray, I could have sprayed it with the floor acrylic. I could have sprayed the whole model and then I would have got a much, much better decal adhesion. But the intention was just to build it as close as possible to a, 19, <coughs> a 1970s build. And I'm happy with what I've got there. That'll, that'll be a very nice addition on the shelf there. Um, but for future... But, oh, I should I should just add these long ones on the side really tricky to get them right to the angle as well so if I if I show you that angle there from the nose there you can see it's not ideal that one's very good very nice angle there with those two parts not so good that side with the door in between I did my best and uh, as a kid I would have done way worse. Oh, okay, it looks like I've lost a piece there. See off the nose there, compared to that side. So that side is actually going above the level. So if you just touch that, it breaks off. And this side has broken off, and but it's, it's broken off in a way that you sort of hardly notice. So yeah, very, very, um, very delicate with the decals. But just about done. Okay, this is the Airfield Wreck uh, Piper Cherokee, that very dirty, mucked up one, which I had shown you. Actually, I wonder if I can get this out. No, okay, that's not going to come out now. It was a little bit loose. I did get that interior out. You see that whole tray? Take that whole tray out. Uh, unless the guy glued it in but in this case I didn't as a kid he didn't I was able to get it out and therefore paint the interior in a more dull coloration uh, seats and everything I masked up the uh, clear parts masked up the windscreen glued on the windscreen fixed the propeller a little bit I said I wasn't going to but it was just about falling off so I just touched a bit of glue on there and positioned it. It was basically off. I did the same to the nose leg. However, the nose leg did then break off. And I glued on these undercarriage doors here. So it's sort of got a little bit of something to stand on. But uh, the original wheels are lost. <clears throat> so this can sort of be put in a position where it's seated on a piece of ground and it's sunk in a little bit. But I'll, I'll still decide exactly what I'm going to do with the wheels. And I will, I think, try and correct the nose leg, um, make a new little brass piece and at least put that on. Put on the aerials, or at least two of them. I didn't want to put on all of the aerials. And I didn't put on that little uh, climbing ladder step there. So with the 
windscreen I just put on blue tack and I'll just peel that off right now and we'll just see how that worked um, it's quite easy to put on a blue tack sort of shield over over something like this I put it I did put it on very thinly and I just sculpted it in place with a little bit of a rod okay so I will I'll just take that off nicely inside the house but it's got a much a much more sedate look inside there not that orange brown which it had um, now I sprayed this I wanted to sort of get that done today so I didn't use Humbrol because that would have required longer drying time I used Tamiya uh, white, I can't remember exactly which one it was. Um, and then I gave it an hour and then I gave it the floor coat. And I've put both of those videos up so that you can just watch some spraying if you felt like it. If you didn't have anything else to watch. It's not the most exciting stuff out. But since I was doing it, I thought I'll just make a video. The, the floor coating is very quick. Oh, and I just wanted to say, so from the amount that I poured into the little bottle, starting at the video, I hardly used any. Um, so most of it got poured back. I don't really recommend pouring it back because you might get a little bit of contaminants from any previous spray job or something like that. But anyway. Okay, so this is, now again, this, this doesn't have to be perfect because this is going to be an airfield wreck. So, you know, that's all going to get dulled down. I'll put in the white center, center pillar. Um, big thing is I've got to get the decals on, seal the decals in, and then I can start the, the big job of aging. Now, when I sprayed this gloss coat, which, can we just catch the light? How am I going to catch the light here? It's it's quite nice and glossy and this is sprayed about half an hour ago and I'm already touching it. Maybe a bit more, 40 minutes ago. Um, so I I just stuck a, a little thing into that hole at the bottom. Not very not a very good method. But anyway, gave it the, the, the sort of first spraying over. A somewhat thickish mist of that stuff. Of the floor acrylic and it's very difficult to actually determine how much you've sprayed unlike color painting so you sort of do a particular method where you know where you've covered it and you know that's a once over decide whether you want to do a second second one and I did a second one but when I put it down I had realized that it was it was slightly on the thick side and that when I put it down at that angle and you'll see in the video sort of at about that angle it did start running and pooling into the corner there so ideally this should have been kept dead center on something which I could stick into a sponge um, toothpick I didn't um, and it didn't matter too much on this build but in the event of you getting a little bit of a thicker section or run, don't touch it, don't do anything. All I did was ch change it, move and put it horizontal and as it dried out. So you can't tell anything at this stage. It's basically a perfect, perfect coat, even on the bad sections, which was too thick. Um, because even, even a bit of a run with this floor coat, when it dries out, it's, it's pretty good. You don't want to get that, of course. So... Two things to learn is, you know, when you've got it on your stick and that you're able to turn it around, give your, give your spraying all over, decide if you want to hold off for a little bit, let that first one dry a bit, because if you do do a second coat at the same time, you do stand the chance of, even as it's standing there with the dihedral of the wings, um, slightly running down into there, or depending on how... You know, don't go and arrange it like that. You'll get heavy runs down all of the areas. That wouldn't be a bad way to, to get it to stand. You would get a little bit of run to that side. But ideally, don't spray, spray it thick enough that you get that. So, I can do decals tonight. Try and finish that. Um, 
Masking those windows was not too long at all. You can't even see it there. Masking those windows. Luckily, you know, close to straight lines took much, much shorter than any of the other aircraft that I've been doing. Um, I'll, I'll do something with the undercarriage, but it's not a big deal. Then one, when I've got the decals on, another gloss coat to seal them in because I can't do weathering if the decals aren't sealed. And you do want all of your weathering to be consistent on the outside. So anyway, it's coming on nicely. It'll be something different in a little bit of a diorama setting. In fact, I might even use a small building. Um, I'll, I'll have a look through what I've got just to add a little bit of size and dimension to a diorama. Or even have this partially inside a, not quite a proper hanger, but a little bit of a farm hanger. That might actually also be an idea, so that you're only able to view this from a certain angle inside a hangar, and it's very, very dirty and dusty. So that'll be good there. Um, apart from that, I've been trying to look at how to clean up this garage. I need to get all of this stuff away and get this table more usable. All the war game stuff needs to get... Huge amount of stuff everywhere, but I'm so cluttered up, but I do want to get things a bit organized, so I'll do a little bit each time. Okay, um, I will be starting on card layouts for the Wheelie Yellow build. Oh, something nice that I got. Um slightly rarer i'm always on the lookout for these and they're very very scarce to come up especially in new zealand is the rc um like like this uh, mustang which i've also got on the on the go which is just about over here and not within your sight the uh top flight one sixth or one seventh scale i think this one's one seventh scale um p51b but what i got is a similar aircraft Possibly one eighth scale Spitfire by Picker. Very, very nice, quite rare, um, nice condition, except for the so the pneumatic airlines for the undercarriage retracts. They give you a nice uh, nice set of uh, rubber, which is not vinyl. It's I, I don't know what they gave in those days. Now keep in mind this is 30 years ago or something. I noticed that there were a couple of pieces broken and then I, I tested it and basically, you know what some rubber bands sometimes do this. If, if rubber bands get absolutely old, they basically turn to glass and you can just crunch them up completely. So that's um, all of the airlines were basically deteriorated to glass. Just crunch the whole lot up like that. Can't use it. Need to get new airlines. That's okay. So I got that. But very interesting thing is I also spotted adverts for a top flight Corsair and a Harvard. I'm not sure about the manufacturer of the Harvard. That one's not top flight. It's something else. Um, busy seeing if, if I can obtain those two. Uh, quite, quite rare to actually have them up for sale. Um, they need to be shipped from another town. So there's still shipping to consider, but very, very nice. And I do want to clean this area up and get back to this for one thing, the um, the marina ship. So I'm going to do a little bit more weathering on the hull. That was one of the next things. Um, and as far as the P-51B, um, I was actually busy with these, which is just magazine paper which I'm rolling up to be able to slot and I'll glue it and make very tight tubes. And what that is for is to, to slot the gun barrels through the front of the wing and they be guided inside into the back bracing. So, cause I don't want them in while I'm doing most of the final work, they must be slot in and basically just turned into position. So these will act as the guides for that I could use a tube if I could find a tube exactly that thickness but um, I, I don't mind trying and using all sorts of things I mean I've got 
I've got all sorts of aluminium and straws and what have you, but this will this will be this will be good enough. Um, but uh, the big problem here is space and organization. Definitely areas that I need to work on. Okay, happy modeling everyone. Till next time. Cheers.